Welcome everyone to class 54, Biblical Foundation, which is Genesis, the book of beginnings. What a blessing. So we are in chapter 10, uh, which is known as the Table of Nations. And we're actually going to finish chapter 10 today. Uh, and so let's go to it. So we'll start with a review of our last class. And so, uh, Lucas, can you please read Genesis 10.3 in English? And the songs of Gomer, Askenaz, and Kifat, and Togarma. Excellent. Those are very good pronunciations, and it's not easy to do pronunciations of old Hebrew words with either an English twist or a Portuguese twist. And you, you did the English twist very, very well. So that's a little bit different how they're written and sound in Portuguese. And let me try the Portuguese. Os filhos de Jafé são Gomer, Magogi, oh, da desculpe, é, é o próximo. E os filhos de Gomer são Ashkenaz, Rifati e Togarma. And now Pedro. Pedro, can you please read question one in English? What song's name is in common usage? Today. Okay. So do you remember between Ashkenaz, Rifath, and Toga Togarma, which sounds like it might be in use today? Ashkenaz. You're yeah. absolutely right. And do you remember what the word is uh, now? No, I, I don't remember. I'm going to write it. It's very in. close. Sorry? It's very closely. It's very close, absolutely. It's, uh, in fact, the same spelling, but, but we just add an I, I for to make it the people of, and it's Ashkenazi, which is a term for European Jews. Okay, so, so Israel is filled with many Ashkenazi, Jews from Europe, and there's also the Sephardim which tend to be Jews from Middle East and Africa. So interesting. Okay, so remember, this table of nations, are we're all descended from these. And so it's interesting to find names that we recognize that are still in use today. All right, so we go back to our power uh, verse reader, uh, Lucas. Can you read Genesis 10.5, please? By these were the Isles of the Gentiles, David, David, in their lands. Every one after his town, after they, their families, in their nations. Very good. <clears throat> A couple of suggestions, Lucas. So that the the it's a that word for is a different word for islands, and so it's isle, isles, right? Not isles, isles. <clears throat> Gentiles, you need to emphasize closer up to the beginning. So so it's Gentiles instead of Gentile Gentiles, and divided. So now the emphasis is in the second I. So remember, English is is irregular and so it in general the emphasis is earlier in the word but it does change sometimes very good let me try that in portuguese for estes foram repartidas as ilhas dos gentios nas suas terras cada qual segundo a sua língua segundo as suas famílias entre as suas nações all right so, Pedro, can you please read two in English?
every uh, everyone after his tone signifies this verse was written when? All right, very good. When do you think? After the Tower of Babel. Absolutely right. Okay, because before then everyone spoke in one tongue, we believe Hebrew, and so then this sounds like after the Tower of Babel. Uh, so great. So Lucas, our our power verse reader, Lucas, can you read Genesis ten six, please, in English? Then the sons of Ham Cush and Mizraim and Put and Canaan. Very good, very well pronounced. Again, excellent. E os filhos de Cão são Cuxi, Mizraim, Puti e Canaã. Very good. Oh, thank you. So we're, we're, we all have hidden Hebrew scholarship or knowledge. This is great. The a Holy Spirit is helping. So, Pedro, can you please read question three in English? Recall that Ham's youngest son was single out for God's curse. Which curse was it? Thank you. And thank you for adding the T. I dropped the T by mistake. So you said absolutely right. Recall that Ham's youngest son. Okay, so do you remember which of these sons was singled out for a curse? It was the was Can Canaan. Canaan. And, yes, exactly right. Canaan. All right. And do you remember what Canaan. curse it was? The Canaanites curse. Okay, and what what was the curse itself? What type of what what was the curse? Mm, was about mm, an, a, a low lower level in the of a servant. Like Absolutely this. right. Absolutely right. So, in the spiritually speaking, they would be servants of servants. So they would they would not lead in spiritual matters. Okay, Lucas, let's go to Genesis ten, eight, please in English. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. Very well pronounced. Excellent. E Cushi gero a Nimrodji. Este come, começou a ser poderoso na terra. <clears throat> uh oh. Some bad news is coming. Okay, so let's go to question four with Pedro, please. This description of Nimrod reminds us of what prior occurrence in the Bible? Okay, so do you remember? So remember, it's using a word which was, uh, the, uh, is not very often used, mighty one. So who else were mighty ones previously? The giants before the flood. Exactly right. Okay, so uh, that's a excellent. So it was the... <clears throat> Giants who were the offspring of women, uh, daughters of Eve, and fallen angels, we believe. Okay, so now we're going to mix things up. So now, Pedro, uh, sorry, Lucas, can you please read question five in English? If the connection is correct, how could Nimrod be in the process of becoming one? Very well read. Thank you. All right, so that's a tough question. It's a controversial one. 
Because remember the verse 10, 8 says, Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. So did he become a giant? We don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. How do you become a giant? <laughs> I thought the giants were born giants. Yeah. We don't, okay, we don't know. We don't know. I had I had a Bible study teacher who believed, remember the Tower of Babel or Babel was to do what? To reach the heavens. That seemed to be the purpose, to build up an, a, a, a tower so that you could go all the way to top to the top. And what would you do at the top, as many pagan religions do at the top? You worship, you have a, a service, you do, you, uh, you know, magic, you, tr you do different things because you're closer to God, you're closer to being a God. And so somehow Nimrod builds the tower and at, at the top of the tower, through some kind of satanic power, he is becoming a giant, okay? He's receiving uh, strange powers. So that's one potential explanation of, of how Nimrod was becoming a mighty one. Okay, so now it's Pedro's turn to, to uh, read a, a, a verse. So Genesis, or two, Genesis 10, 13 to 14, please, in English. And Mizraim begat Latin, and Anamin, and Lehabin, and Naphtohim, and Pathrosin, and Kazlohim, out of whom came Palestine, and Catherine. Excellent. You know what? I think you pronounce those better than I could. You know, maybe you've been practicing, okay. or maybe the Holy Spirit uh, completely helped both of you, or pronouncing difficult words. That aren't common they aren't in common usage uh many of those i don't remember hearing you know so excellent because it's it's uh, they all sounded like a good english pronunciation of those hebrew names so let me try uh the portuguese thank you welcome a misraim gerou a lujim a ananim a leabim a naftuim a patrucin e a casulin donde saíram os filisteus e a caftorim. All right. You, you saved the name. Very, very great. Also. Well, thank you. I think the Portuguese was easier than the English, in my, I, I think. But anyway, I appreciate it. Okay, so... Let's go back to Lucas. Lucas, can you read question six in English? Which grandson of Ham lends his name to an important biblical people? Very well pronounced. Thank you. So remember this uh, Genesis 13, 14, it says Mizraim begat, or his children were, and so why do I say grandson? Well, remember, back in verse Genesis 10, 6, it says the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim. And so uh, obviously then Mizraim is the son. And so this list are grandsons of Ham. Okay, so... So which grandson of Ham lends his name to an important biblical people? It is Kazlehem. Interesting. Because... And, and, and which name is that are you thinking of? Because after his name, it's, it's written that from him came the Palestine. The who? The game Palestine. 
Mas só o de... The Palestinians. The Palestinians. He is talking about... Yes. Okay. Interesting. But I, I'm not sure that that name... All right. Okay. And you know what? And I think you're absolutely right. Because in my Bible study, it says the Kaf, uh, Kafturim are identified in the Bible with the Philistine. But then the word I was looking for is the Philistine, because the, the word in, that's used a lot in the Bible is Philistines. Okay, so that's one of the peoples yeah. that the Jews have to conquer. So I think the 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 uh, the, the grandson uh, or out of whom came the Philistine, uh, so Philistines. But let's go to question seven, which is the last question of review, to see why that that's of interest. So Pedro, can you read question seven, please? What modern name is descended from that name? Given to Jews by the Romans, due to the Jews' hat hatred for that people. All right, it's hatred, and so again, it's irregular because the A is open, even though there's not a you know a silent E after one consonant. But okay, very good. So now I'm looking for a modern name because no one is called Philistines. There's no no people group. They were destroyed. Uh, and disappeared, which is fulfilling biblical prophecy. But what present day name is used in the place of the name Philistines? Palestine. Absolutely right. Okay. And so let's just remember the history of this word. Did, did uh, Palestine uh, exist as a people uh, in any any historic time? No. Exactly right. All right. So so it, uh, when when people tell you the Palestine the Palestinians have a right to their land that they were there before the Jews, it's a lie. <laughs> All right, there's, there, there were no Palest Palestinians. Uh, it was a name given to the Jews by the Romans as an insult. All right, the Jews didn't want to be called after one of their worst enemies, the Philistines. And just a, another historic fact, before World War II, the Palestinian orchestra in Jerusalem was what? All Jewish. There was a Palestinian uh, Palestinian Post newspaper. What was it? In Hebrew for Jews. Okay, so the term Palestine, uh, uh, as this history shows us, was then again the Romans' name for the Jews because it was an insult to the Jews. And it was only after World War II that the Arabs decided, no, 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 Jews were never Palestinians. We are the Palestinians. So it's all false. All right, so let's, let's go to new material. Uh, and we're going to continue studying the Table of Nations and even finish it up because we're not, as you can tell, we're not reading every verse. Uh, we're, we're reading verses of higher interest. Okay, so Lucas, our, our Bible verse specialist, can you read Genesis 10, 18, please, in English? And the Arphadite and the Semarite and the Hamathite and afterwards were the family families of the Canaanites spread abroad. Very well pronounced. Thank you. Let me try that in, in uh, Portuguese. E ao arvadeu 
ao Zemareu e ao Amateu, e depois se espalharam as famílias dos cananeus. All right, so let's go, Pedro, to question A in English, please. Okay, so I don't expect you to know the answer to that. So it's, it's a very detailed historic question, but I bring it out because it's very interesting. <clears throat> so... Uh, Remembering all from all 70 nations, all ethnic groups and all nations have descended. Uh, and so we believe, or, or Bible scholars believe, that the families of the Canaanites, which are promised in 1018 to spread abroad, okay, they believe that the Canaanites are referring here to the Mongols. I'm going to write that in the chat. All right, have you heard of the word Mongols before? Yes. Excellent. I know. And do you know, do you remember who was the most famous Mongol? The most famous, I don't know. Okay. But, but I, I know, I know some, some historic facts. Okay, and where and, and where in general were the Mongols? They are in Mo Mongolia. Well, that's true. That 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 nation was named after them. But were they only in Mongolia? No. No, I think in in India. Uh huh. So they spread over a lot of of uh, Asia, and so their yeah. ruler, the most famous ruler here, I put it in the chat, is named. Genghis Khan. Okay, so Genghis Khan, who was a 12th century ruler and, and led horseback, all right, so famous raids. He was a great military conqueror and, and he conquered far, far west uh, to Constantinople and even further in, uh, into Europe. And so that's that's going west, but we believe the Mongols also went east. Now, from Mongolia, how do you go as far east as possible? It's a now this is a geography question. So you're in Mongolia in Asia. How do you go by land as far as possible east? By the Strait of of. I don't remember the, the name, but they they went to America. Absolutely right. Okay, so you can say where Alaska now is, the state of Alaska, and it's called the Bering Strait. Okay, is actually the the name of the, the body of water. Currently it's a it's a uh, uh, ocean. But we believe for many years, particularly during and after the Ice Age, it, there was a land bridge. Uh, and so that uh, populations crossed over into the Americas. And so uh, if, and remember, we're talking that, uh, well, it could have been earlier, but 12th century was when Genghis Khan was moving. Who do they believe were, were, were descended from the Mongols or the Canaanites in the Americas? They are the, the Indians. Absolutely right. Excellent, Pedro. So that we can call them native Indians because if you say Indians alone, sometimes in, it's confusing because people from India are also called Indians. So in English, depending on the context, when you talk about cowboy and Indians, it's obviously native Indians, right? Uh, in the Americas, and not, not people from India. So excellent. All right, so now here's a, here's, here's a funny question. So Lucas, can you please read question B in English? Which American cult claims to be descended from the Israelites 
in the new wo world. Very good. All right. So the 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 uh, it's it it one could say Israelis is how we would re refer to them today, but Israelites. So they're kind of people associated with Israel and the Jews, the Israelites. All right, so now that's a tough one. So first of all, let's think. There are various American so-called Christian cults. Is there one that claims to be descended from these Israelites? So give me, give me, a, do you remember the name of some American cults? So cults that started in America. There are many, unfortunately, but there are several large ones. Well, I, I, I don't know. Okay. Specific name. Okay. So in my Bible history course, we discuss it at one point the, the all the in the 18th century and 19th century specifically how Satan counterattacked and created a bunch of cults. Uh, Jehovah in America, Jehovah's Witnesses are one. Uh, Seventh Day Adventists are, is another cult, and the one here I'm looking for are the Mormons. Okay, and the Mormons that that's not their formal name. Their formal name is the Church of the Latter Day Saints. Okay, but everyone knows them as Mormons from Utah. And so, if you can believe it, the Mormons claim to be descended from these Israelites, from Native Americans. Okay, they don't say they're, they no longer say they only were descended, that they all were Native American descendants, but now they say part of their uh, ancestors were these ancient Israelites. Okay, so... Uh, by the way, there's zero evidence of it. Uh, ge genealogical uh, 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 discoveries, even DNA examining uh, exams to check for Native American blood, no. So nice try, Mormons, nice try. Okay, so Pedro, can you please read Genesis 10.20? These are the sons of Ham after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in, the, in their nations. Okay. So let me try it very well pronounced. Let me try that in Portuguese. Estes são os filhos de cão, segundo as suas famílias, segundo as suas línguas, em suas terras, em suas nações. All right. So, Lucas, can you kindly read question C in English? Yeah, this imply occurred at the Tower of Babel. Okay, very well pronounced. Thank you. All right, so anyway, it's interesting. So we know that the, the languages were divided, right? So it was one language to many languages. What does this verse imply about uh, that process? In this verse, it, it is is already saying about the countries and and the nation mm -hmm. and so by by these countries it, it implies that they were they they went to very different place agreed agreed uh, and nations both of those imply that that they dispersed they were forced to disperse but what I'm thinking of actually are the two, things before. So it says, after their families, after their tongues. The implication seems to be that how did God divide uh, the people at the Tower of Babel? We know he created many different languages. It looks like one language per family. Yes. Okay, so and perhaps 70 different languages were were created at the Tower of Babel. So interesting. This it's not true, but there were there were a lot of languages, a lot of confusion. Okay. Just that's just a, you know, that's an interesting possibility. 
So Pedro, can you read Genesis 10, 22, please? The children of Shem, and Elam, and Asher, and Arphashad, and Lud, and Aram. Excellent pronunciation. Again, I think better than I than I would do for my first attempt. Let me try uh, that in Portuguese. Os filhos de Sem são Elão, Assur, Arfashadi, Luji e Aram. Very good. Well, we're all inspired this evening then. So, uh, Lucas, can you kindly give question D or, or recite question D in English? From which of Shem's sons did a family's widespread language descent? Very good. Okay, so what do you think? We look at all those names. Does one of them remind you of a famous language name? I, I didn't see any okay. name in me. I'm going to give you a hint. And the hint I'm going to give you is via a question. The Bible is written in which three languages? We is in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. Aha! I'm glad you left the yeah. last one for us. So Aramaic sounds like it is Aram. Yeah. Okay, so it's a language group descended from that child of Shem named Aram, and he gave his name to the language, Aramaic. Okay, interesting. We keep on finding interesting words. So, Pedro, can you go ahead and read Genesis 10.25 in English? And un unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Pe Pele. Pele. For in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Shoktan. Excellent pronunciation. Let me try that in Portuguese. E a Eber nasceram dois filhos. O nome de um foi Pelegi, porquanto em seus dias se repartiu a terra. E o nome de seu irmão foi Joktan. The first name. I, I think you say the em emphasize a little more to the, to the end. Mm. It's Eber. Eber. Ah, okay. Eber. Eber. Invest in, uh, instead of Eber. Okay, Eber. Eber. Okay, thank you. All righty. So let's go now. Lucas, can you give us question E in English? What kind of division of the earth might have occurred in Peleg time? Excellent pronunciation. Okay, because remember the verse we just read says, the name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided. Hmm. Divided in what way? What do we think? I, I have no idea. It's a, it's an interesting, huh? Well, yes. here is the 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 uh, more fun response, but I don't think it's the correct one. At one point, we believe or scientists speculate that the the Earth had one large landmass, and at one point. What happened to the, the landmass? It divided. Okay. People notice how Africa and South America seem to fit into each other. Right? If uh, that if you look at their profiles, that they would fit nicely and then ooh, they separated. But that all of that is speculation. Uh, and the response here is in Peleg's time. That would have happened. It doesn't sound reasonable. 
the time for such a massive geological, uh, uh, geographical change would have been when? During the global flood. Okay, okay. so if, if it was true that it started as one continent and split up, the massive cataclysmic changes of the flood would, would explain it. It's hard to believe it happened during Peleg's time. So in other words, the earth divided, it's more likely it divided at the Tower of Babel. Uh, and so he's talking, or do the division of languages, and so he, he's implying, or the Bible seems to be telling us, that during the time of Peleg, maybe all of the, the people migrated to the places where they ended up. Okay, so essentially all the nations were formed after the migration. So it took two generations for those crazy Canaanites, Israelites, to, to cross over the Bering Strait and populate not just North America, but all of the Americas. Okay, so that's more likely. But anyway, it's fun. So let's let's finish up uh, with the last verse of uh, the Table of Nations, Genesis 10, and with today's lesson. So where are we? Where are... So, so Pedro, can you kindly read Genesis 10.32 in English? These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the, in the earth after the flood. Very well pronounced. Thank you. Let me try that in Portuguese. Estas são as famílias dos filhos de Noé, segundo as suas gerações, nas suas nações, e destes foram divididas as nações na terra depois do dilúvio. Okay, so here it's it's actually even saying that the division of the earth is after the flood. Okay, so let's thou go. Lucas, can you read question F in English? Does the Bible support claims of hominids population claim populating the earth? Very good, and good correction, because you were about to use the noun population when it's the gerund of the verb to populate, and the gerund of the verb to populate is populating. All right, so this is this is fun question. Hominids is a is a kind of evolutionist term for what are called what they believe were early humans, such as the Neanderthals, like cavemen, okay? And some people, and in fact, uh, I attended a church in San Juan where the lovely pastor believed that in the time uh, of after Cain and Abel, during the time of Cain and Abel, that there already were other human beings or early human beings in order for those sons to marry, not their sister. <laughs> okay, so, but does the Bible say anywhere? We just, we just let, read of the 70 nations does it say that there was the Neanderthal nation or the Croagnon man nation or anything like that? No. no. Okay. So the Bible does not support any of those, those wacky theories. Uh, and just for you to know, if you go to a science class uh, in a secular school, they will tell you just that, that the Neanderthal, the Neanderthal man, the pro, the the pro, cro, cro, no, I'm forgetting now. Uh, various men who were cave dwellers were uh, early men descended from apes. Okay, but the uh, Bible doesn't support it, and true science doesn't either. They all have been shown again and again that they were 
humans. They were humans who 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 uh, were had developed some cruder habits as they regressed. They lived in caves for too long, in difficult climates. They didn't, uh, you know, civilize. They regressed. Okay, so let's finish up. Pedro, can you kindly read question G in English? From Noah's three sons, all humans descend. Do they represent three different races? Okay. And so I just wanted to remind you, so from Noah's three sons, all humans descend. And in there, and I uh, cite Genesis 9, 19, which I'll read for you. So Genesis 9, 19 says, These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. Okay, so the implication is not that they spread over just part of the world and the other uh, parts of the world had hominids <laughs> or apes who were like having too much fun. All right, so, uh, but then here's the kicker question. Do they represent three different races? Maybe, maybe not race specific, specifically, but it can be only different, different people with different characters. Absolutely right. Okay, so A plus, Pedro. So first of all, the, the answer is, is uh, they do they represent three different races? No. <laughs> Remember, in a pure and preserved Bible, in the King James Bible, the word race never enters. It's only in modern Bibles. Uh, somehow Satan got in that good word, race, to divide us by race, when in fact all Christians know what? We're all descended from Adam and Eve, correct? Yes. Uh, and and then you know, through Noah's sons, so through Noah, uh, and what does that mean? That means there's only what one race called the human race. Okay, so so the idea of races is a actually a satanic idea. It's not biblical, and it's intentionally used by Satan to divide us. And Pedro, you said it absolutely right. Well, yeah, the, the, there's a, of Noah's three sons, there's one whose name is used for an entire important ethnic group. And which one is that? Of those three sons, is there's one that like, wow, okay, so that there's an entire ethnic group named after that son's descendants. Do you remember the name? They are the... The Shemites. Exactly right. Descended from Shem, and actually we drop the H. So they aren't known as the Shemites, they're known as the Semites. Semites, okay. Okay, and it's in very common usage today because uh, anyone who hates the Jews, or I would say hates Israel, is an anti-Semite. Because now the usage for Semite tends to be only the Jews, but the Semitic family is large. It includes all Arabs. Okay, so, so the descendants of Shem are many, uh, but they were, just as you said, Pedro, not a three separate races, but actually a number of different ethnic groups. So excellent response. Very Thank good you. class. Well done. Any questions or comments in English? No, I, I have no one. Okay, or not one. If you say no one, that means that's a response to no person, no one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right, interest, small difference, but not one. It refers to then a noun, like a question. So very good. So thank you, everyone. I'm just going to end the recording.